This video will demonstrate the use of the Excel Pivot spreadsheet for using Gauss-Jordan reduction to reduce an augmented matrix such that we can read off the solution of the associated system of linear equations. You'll notice that I have entered a, an augmented matrix. If you can visualize a vertical line at the right hand side of column 3 to separate the coefficient matrix columns 1, 2, and 3 from the constant mat the unit matrix uh, from this original system of equations. I entered this before we the video began but one thing I want to suggest you do is once you have entered the items on, into the augmented matrix I rec recommend you click the button called remember what that does is it takes what you have entered onto the spreadsheet and places it into memory so that if you would erase the, the, the augmented matrix you can go back and say recall from memory and it'll place it back the way it was now as you recall as we discussed in class, the objective of the Gauss-Jordan elimination method is to reduce this augmented matrix so that the left-hand side, the, the coefficient matrix, are all made up of unit columns, and then the right-hand side are the resulting values that we, from which we can read off the solution of the system of equations. There are a number of row operations that we can perform in order to do that. And I'm going to demonstrate them here. Okay? The first one was to interchange rows. And in order to do that, you in the column titled Row Operations, you enter into that cell the the destination that you want that row to be. So for example, to move row 2 in that augmented matrix to make it row 1, I will enter in R1 in the row operation. And if I want to have take row 2 and go into row 1, I want row 1 to go into row 2. I just change the upper class, upper case and lower case. It is not sent the case of the of the letter written in the, in the row operations. Once I've set designated that I want to take row one and make it row two and row two make it row one, I then click the bu the button above that says do row operations. And if you'll look at the augmented matrix, you'll see what it has done. It was it has interchanged row one and row two. If, for example, you entered the row operations by mistake or it wasn't what you wanted to do, there is a button to the upper right titled Undo. If you click that button, it will reverse, it will undo the row operations that you have entered into that row operations column. Okay? Well, let's do that row operation again. So now we have the augmented matrix with a 1 in the upper left hand corner and we can now apply other Gauss-Jordan row, uh, row operations in order to reduce this matrix. We'll clear the row operations okay and Gauss-Jordan says what we want to do is we want to obtain a unit column in the first column on the matrix. That is with a 1 located here and then all zeros in the other locations. So in order to do that I'm going to select a row operations that's going to place a 0 where there is now a 2 in that column. In order to do that I'm going to take the element in row 2 and I'm going to subtract from it the corresponding element in row 1. What that will do, if it if I did it correctly, will make that a zero. So let's do the row operation. Oops, didn't work, did it? 
Well, let's undo it and see what did I do wrong. Oh, look at that. I wanted to say, I wanted to say 2 times row 1. So if I put a 2, go to the formula bar, put a 2 in that location, now I'm going to take the element in row 2 and subtract 2 times what's in row 1. Take the element in row 2 and subtract 2 times 1 is 2 should give me a 0. Let's do the row operation. And that's exactly what it did. Okay. I now can clear that row operation. I don't want to accomplish the same thing on row 3. So I'll take the elements in row 3 and subtract from it 3 times row 1. Let's see if I entered that row operations correctly. I will do that row operation. And sure enough, I got what I wanted. Okay. Once we've completed that um, function, we now want to change the pivot point from the uh, row 1, column 1 to row 2, column 2. So let's clear the row operations. Hit the wrong button. <laughs> clear the row operations. And now we want to pivot about the second element, that one there. But in order to do that, I want to have a 1 in there. So I'm going to apply a row operation that says take 1 7th and multiply it by row 2. And every element in row 2 will be multiplied by the constant of 1 7th. If I perform that row operation, sure enough, there I've got my 1. Clear the row operations. Now, as I did on the first column, I could reduce each row with a single row operation. So I could put the row operation in here and say, take what's in row 3 and subtract from it 8 times row 1. Sorry, row 2. <laughs> okay. If I perform that, you'd see I'd get the 0 where I want. Let me back up for a minute and say I didn't need to do it in just one row. I could have done two rows at once. So as long as I've specified that row, which will reduce row 3, I can now put in there the row operation to redu reduce row 1. And that, so that says take row 1, and well, since it's a negative 2, I want to, I will add to it 2 times row 2. And that should make the element in row 1, column 2, a 0 as well. Let's do those row operations, and sure enough, there I have it. Okay? I now, since I've got a unit column in row 2, I'm now going to move to column 3 and make that a unit column. Clear row operations. I want to make row 3 a 1. And it gets, this is a little tricky here, so let me do something here and I'll tell you the reason why. It's kind of hard to mix um, row operations on this spreadsheet. So the first thing I'm going to do is make that positive. And I'll do that by simply saying multiply row 3 by a negative 1. And that should change the uh, signs in that row. If I do that row operation, sure enough it changed the signs. Okay. Now that I've completed with that, now I want to make sure that that's a unit, a 1. So I do that by multiplying the inverse of 51 sevenths, which is 7 over 51 times row 3. And what that should do is change that element to a 1. And it does. Okay. Since I now have that as a unit, I am now going to be able to reduce the other two rows to a, make that a unit column with a 1 
in in row three, column three, and then the other two being zero. In order to do that here, I take what is in row two and add to it five sevenths of what's in row three. And that should reduce row two. Similarly, I take will take what is in row one and subtract from it, subtract because you notice they are different signs, from subtract from it eleven sevenths times what's in row three. Right. And if I did that correctly, do my row operations, you will see that indeed I have reduced row column 1, 2, and 3 to all being units. And when it is in that form, Gauss-Jordan tells me I have my solution, which says column 1, which was the x's, 1x is equal to 2. Second column were all the y's, 1y is equal to 1 and 1z is equal to negative 1. That would be the solution to my system of equations. Okay? Alright. few shortcuts in here once you're there. Uh, I'm going to undo that last row operation. Okay? Clear the row operation. Okay? And what I could do instead of, of individuals, I could specify that that's the one a row I want to reduce or use as the pivot point. And if that's the case, then I can tell it to pivot about that selection. So if I would click that, you will see it perform it, the, it, it computes what those row operations ought to be and reduces it. So the, this task which I just completed could be simplified in this way. Remember I, rem I, re I uh, remembered it? So I'm going to call it back again. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take column 1 and I'm going to use that as the pivot and I'll pivot the, about that element and you can see it performed two row operations to perform that. Change my pivot area to the second one. Pivot about that selection and there I have it. And then select my third one and pivot about it and I've got my result. Okay? Once you do note over here on the right hand side there are three buttons that can select it. I operated on the fraction button okay but I could have clicked on the decimal in which case each element would have been written as a decimal the results instead of being fractional would have been decimal in size. Okay. Um, if there's an element that there that can't be done, you can see eligible or we're not allowed in certain areas. So, okay. This concludes the video for demonstrating Excel pivot for to reduce Gauss-Jordan.